Hello and welcome to The Quest on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Rakhi Bakshi. In this show, as you know, that we keep talking to leading personalities. Each week, we bring you a new guest. And the guest this week is the famous cardiac surgeon, a veteran doctor, in fact, also heads uh, this uh, Medanta Medical Complex uh, in Gurgaon. And we'll talk to him. Welcome to the show now, Mr. Naresh Thank Trehan. You. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Naresh Trehan, sorry, and correct myself. And uh, let's start with this whole healthcare system. Um, how, as a leading doctor, would you think that the scene is right now? See, like everything else, India is a paradox in healthcare also. So we have the highest end of healthcare, which is comparable to anybody in the world. But on the other hand, it is not accessible to majority of the people. Exactly. And then there is the, at the lower end, we have really dismal healthcare facilities. And it varies from state to state and area to area. So you can say the challenge of India healthcare hmm. is that it is a ragtag broken system right now very much in need of actually bringing it out of the ICU and making a proper, well-connected healthcare delivery system which starts from the last person standing on the village mm -hmm. to the highest need of tertiary or critical care. You know, I'm really glad that you're saying it, but where you sit today, a veteran doctor with so many years of experience, uh, look at this whole urban versus rural kind of healthcare. And some would say that a place like this maybe would talk of elitist kind of healthcare. And you are, of course, talking also about the challenges. But where would you see this widening gap? See, there are two things one must keep in mind. One is your resources, and the other, how best they can be used to deliver the objective of your mission. Okay. So here we are, we are saying we must give all our citizens mm -hmm. a decent quality of health care. Having said that, you now study the landscape of health care in India mm -hmm. and say 80% of the health care is being delivered by private mm -hmm. bodies, 20% by the government and NGO. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now if you look at it and say that any healthcare facility mm. or asset mm. is first an Indian asset and then a private or a government asset. For a moment you must think like that. So you say if you break down all the firewalls between government, private sector and NGO mm. and treat them all in one string, mm you can then get at least 50% more efficiency out of the current assets. But let's not forget the cost of it all. Excuse me. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So the basic thing is that if we utilize everybody's assets adequately in one connected stream, you will see that we can, for the same cost that we are giving today, the government is spending on public health today, mm. with the same cost we can serve 50% more people. Just not spending a single penny more. Mm -hmm. So you know we can keep demanding more money, more money, but as you have understood in the last budget, there is no money. Exactly. So, Please elaborate so on that. that, means, that so kind that of spending that it So needs. that means we must make the system efficient. First of all, we must stop the leakages everywhere. Medicines, doctors not coming to work, uh, people uh, sort of bidding for higher prices and giving them away. So those are very easy to stop. Right? Because that is somebody must care that we now India is not going to tolerate any corruption or any nonsense, especially in healthcare, because that is dealing with lives of people. Mm -hmm. So you are actually doing a criminal act if you're stealing from the healthcare budget. Sure. Right. Okay, that is one part. Yeah. Second part is I'll give you an example that we, we know that the maternal mortality in India is high because many women and, and infants or, or babies yeah. lose their lives because of lack of facilities that means sometimes the anesthesiologist is not available sometimes the gynecologist is not available because there's a shortage yeah nobody's fault so as we said we put a proposal to the government saying that we in private healthcare sector because we have a very wide network we have volunteered hmm. to give services of our anesthesiologists our gynecologist to the public health system by committing free of charge, voluntary services to them so that no woman should die in childbirth and no in, no baby should die. I'm so glad you're talking about maternal health. But so I'm, trying, I'm just giving you a very small example where private health and government health can work together mm -hmm. to make, fill the gaps mm -hmm. 
and by filling those gaps you can provide the service to the villages to the to the uh, marginalized people much more effectively than we can do very today. good idea but let's talk again about the private healthcare system competition i mean like any mm. other healthcare is a big business now in india so what about this competitive pricing or all these things elements that come in uh, where uh, you know the private sector and so many elements there would actually why for you know creating let's say looking at uh, more space into the sector no see you have to figure out like you said it's very expensive in private healthcare but why is it expensive somebody should stop and think the reason it's expensive is because the inputs are very expensive so if the facilities that you create where you can give infection free treatment mm. where you can give proper treatment for the highest form of disease like cancer like heart disease for brain disease then you need equipment which is very expensive then you have doctors and staff and the salaries of these people is also going up so when the inputs are there and we can still produce a bypass operation between 1.5 to 2 lakhs rupees as compared to 20 lakhs in the west then we have accomplished something now the point is it's too it's too expensive for the general indian population yeah exactly that means we cannot reduce the cost any further because the inputs are there mm -hmm. but we can improve the access to those people by insurance okay so that is where we need to align the whole healthcare system you can't look at one thing and say ye theek nahi hai ye ye expensive hai you have a healthcare system is a full yeah full stream uh, you must write the blueprint properly i know and look at a macro picture maybe right. uh, but look at government schemes and i would like to take your take on that is that you had nrhm you have national health assurance scheme uh, government of course plans to even spend more which is a challenge uh, for the government also but how would you look at the like you talked about the budget and how much kind of is allocated to the health sector how much more actually it requires to be spent how would you look at that so we all need to participate you are saying what we have suggested is today the rashtriya bima yojana mm -hmm. so that is 30000 rupees per person okay right per year we are saying that if you were to double the rashtriya bima uh, swasthya bima yojana then you immediately bring them into the loop of being able to get get treatment from from us at a at a base level hernias you know gall bladder uh, stomach problems other treatments they can be easily accessed and we will give special rates no question okay second is that god forbid they need a critical illness mm -hmm. like a heart surgery like a brain surgery like a cancer then you give a 2 lakh per family cover per year it's only going to cost the government 18000 crores which is very possible to do today and your coverage will be 70% more okay so, so these are all things that we have worked out okay. from the private sector in association with the government agencies to see what are the various ways and forms of tackling this problem sure okay. and we would like to talk to you more about all this but right now we are taking a very short break you're watching the quest we are talking to dr naresh trehan don't go away Welcome back to the show. You're watching the Quest, and we are in conversation with Dr. Naresh Trehan. Uh, look at the kind of spending, public health spending other countries have. Look at China, which is a neighbor, of course, also struggling with population, but doing well. U.S. of course, much larger spending, and India, of course, one percent, as I understand. Uh, how would you really look at the public health awareness? Should be more, more concentration on how it should be, as you talked about, the access should be more universal, and spending, of course. So, what are the pillars of good health for a nation? first of all you must provide them what drink, clean drinking water sanitation garbage disposal mosquito control and a school in every village so that at least people can, are aware of their hygiene 50% of these diseases will go away by itself you will not have diarrhea dysentery malaria typhoid all this stuff will go away mm. so you have already by not spending any money by just providing human decent living condition mm. you have reduced your disease burden by 50% so that means that means the existing beds 
are already doubled because your disease burden has gone down. So it's a very simple thing, but we need to have a national scheme. Hmm. And I'm glad the current government is even talking about Swachh Bharat and all this stuff. Yeah. This is a step in the right direction. Exactly, sanitation. Right. Then my biggest thing is that the public-private partnership. Public-private partnership has many forms. So you can participate with the public in every form. So now if you mobilize the whole population to clean, hmm. that this is public-private partnership. It does not require any money. People are willing to do things. We need to leverage the strength of our civil society wherever we can. The government needs to make these basic things available. Mm -hmm. So if you take a, like one company, Bharati yeah. Airtel, has said, Bharati has said, we will provide toilets yeah, to X number of yeah, people. Yeah. But if you provide a toilet and there is no clean drinking, yeah. clean drinking water in that village, yeah then it's a job half done and it's, it's not going to do. So my suggestion is, mm -hmm. you take the full healthy and educated program together. Mm -hmm. Aggregate everybody. Have we have done, done this model. Okay. We have already done it. To say, you take care of these five things. So if Bharti is going to take care of toilets and sanitation, mm -hmm. somebody else can take care of the garbage disposal and mosquito control, mm -hmm. and somebody else can take care of the water. So four agencies, four private companies also, yeah, some government puts in, can actually create a full healthy village. Hmm. If we start doing that, we will have the end result. If you know, I tell you know, the challenge for you would be maybe, and you're talking about this PPP model, but uh, you know, let, look, let's look at states. India has a federal structure. Let's look at states and then districts, the kind of challenges. Let's say even if you start, you talked about sanitation, and I know that uh, the industrial bodies have a lot of plans, but how to really look at those state level interactions and how to counter those district level challenges again as to how you create systemic you know, infrastructure? How would you look at that? Look, what you're saying is the challenge is huge. It's not easy. Easier said than done, but definitely doable. So don't, I, I, for a moment, I don't believe that we should just give up and say India is too big a mess, we can't fix it. I think we can. We need a starting point. We need to work diligently. The government needs to help the pri private society. The society needs to feel more, more responsible. All this is, can happen. It's just that we need to act. But where, how one would tackle this whole gap and disparity? I'll come back to that again. You know, talk about private medical colleges coming up. Talk about lack of medical professionals. Talk about doctors not really willing so much to go to the I'll give you a very simple example. Shortage of doctors, shortage of technicians, shortage of nurses. So what are we doing? We are saying we shall provide a, a primary health center, a sub-center, there are not enough doctors. How are you going to give a primary health center? So the solution to that is mm. you have ASHA in every village. Mm. Train the ASHA to become the frontline health worker. Which, Which they are trying, trying to do. We have already developed yeah. from Health Sector Skill Council the 10-point module program to, to make upgrade the knowledge of the ASHA. Mm. Okay, once we do that, we have 880,000 ASHAs in the, on the ground in yeah. India. Okay, yeah. so we make them perform better. Mm. We create mo they, they mobile health incentives. Even they need incentives, which I think the no, has to be you're paying them, you pay them better. Yeah. Let them be your frontline eyes and ears. Yeah. Now you know, then you can wherever there is shortage of doctors, you use mobile health systems. You can create mobile hospitals, mobile clinics, mobile dispensaries. Mm. And you can cover six to eight times the ground by one system than what you would do with a fixed system. So I'll give you an example. Panipat district, I did a study. Four civil hospitals in Panipat district. Mm -hmm. Population is 25 lakhs. Mm -hmm. 351 villages. Mm -hmm. If you required the PHC model, you will need somewhere 80 to 100 doctors. Not available. If you take base four to six mobile mm -hmm. dispensaries mm -hmm. in those civil hospitals, mm -hmm you can do it with less than 20 doctors. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to say. You need to think of inno you know, innovative reasons, program. Uh, one of the reasons observers, observers would say that why doctors are not going to uh, or willing to go to the villages because they're paid much more, you know, in the private sector. Uh, there's huge, huge money. money. That's not, that is one part. Lucrative. That is, no, no, that's only part of the reason. Where will the doctor stay in a village? There's not even sanitation there. You think he's going to take his family there? There's not even a school or college there for him to study. You can't have unrealistic expectations from people who are, who, have, who are giving up their lives to serve people. We know how much, what we do. But the basic thing is, you till that 
day comes when it is possible for, for any human being to, educated to take their families and live. We are saying upgrade the living standards of the village. We are not saying that we will not go live there. The basic thing is very difficult and there are not enough doctors. How are they going to go there? I am saying you can multiply. Use the power of IT. I can sit here yeah. and give consultations to 500 people Which you've done who may you. not be able to access me otherwise. It doesn't cost them anything. I'm willing to do it. They, they can't, they don't have to travel hundreds of miles to, to come. Leverage IT, leverage intelligent healthcare delivery systems. Somebody needs to care and sit there and systematically over a period of few days, hmm. take all the experts in one room and I can guarantee you we can make this healthcare system work hmm. at least 100% better than what it is today. You know, as we talk today, and a few months only after a budget will commence, and uh, how would you look at, what are your expectations in fact that... Uh, See, in the past, to... after every budget, I would go on the TV and say, look, they didn't do enough, they didn't do enough, till I realized in the past budget that there is no money. It has been all, uh, the treasury has been emptied by the government, previous government. So now they didn't have any money. So what we are saying is, there are two parts to it. Make what you have, make it function efficiently and then add whatever money you can. But you can easily, cleaning does not require money. You already have the staff, you already have everything, but nobody cares. So you have to put the standards, you have to put the teeth into what you are saying. You have to pe take people to task. We must work as a country, like a, not like a just free for all people uh, running around what they want to do. Yeah. So yeah. of course, uh, some more time that we'll talk to you also about and many issues also. And Dr. Trehan is here with us and we are talking to him on the quest on Rajya Sabha TV. We'll continue to talk to him even after this short break. Welcome back to the show. You're watching The Quest. We are talking to Dr. Naresh Trehan. So what should be the road map according to you? Okay. Like I said, first, first thing first, you're sitting in Medanta. Ostensibly, ostensibly, it belongs to me, large part of it. Mm. It does not belong to me first. It first belongs to India. It is an Indian asset, which I'm running, I created, I'm running, I may benefit from it, but it is still an Indian asset. What the government has, it's not the government's. It is Indians, India's asset. It's the people of India's assets. It's being run by the government. NGOs, again, whatever the facilities they have, it is Indian asset. So if you take every asset as an Indian asset first mm -hmm. and say, what role can I make institutions in the private sector do? What role can I make the government sector do? What can I do the NGO? And I want to start from the ground up and string wherever somebody needs. Now, there are already existing models. Where the would the balance come from? For models. example, when talking about affordable health care, where would the balance come from? Example, okay. What's the key? Uh, so, I will give you the different aspects. One, the facilities have to be utilized better. Mm -hmm. Then, government will do what it can do. So, primary health care at the ground level, private sector cannot do. Because it's a government function, the government has a machinery at the at the panchayat level, at the yeah. district level, at the right. The network, yeah. So they can do that very easily. We will help them in whatever wherever gaps are there. Second comes, we can be more help to the to the government facilities in the secondary care, that is district hospitals, civil hospitals. Those hospitals, we can if there is a gap, we can do private public partnership. We can do assistance. We can do volunteer work. Which you you saying you're ready to? Uh, let's talk about no, all these. Look, 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 look. I'm saying take me on it. Sure. Don't be cynical. So I'm sure the right people are watching it as Dr. Thayan talks to us. Point. But let's look at again some of the, the disease scene here. You know, recently uh, India was. No, but you you didn't let me finish the story. So you're saying. We made a PPP model. We identified 341 sites in this country. Where the model is, the government and private sector will, will combine and create 200 bed, hosp mm -hmm. bed hospitals yeah. in, in every district eventually, but 341. Sounds first, very ideal, yeah. Where 40% of the cost of creation will be given by the government as a grant. The rest will be private sector uh, partner will do it. They will provide 33% of the beds to the below poverty line people. Middle 33 for the middle, lower middle level and next 30% for market rate. 
and we have worked this model out. It's a workable model, okay. but it has not seen. It was done with the plan, planning commission, but it has not seen the light of the day yet. So let's. So, so yeah. we are saying. So let's now, talk about no, the success no, no, stories. No, no. I, what <laughs> my expectation is. Yeah. I am saying there are many existing programs and solutions which have been worked out, mm -hmm. which actually never saw the light of the day. Okay. We can dust those blueprints, and we know some of them. I know, yeah. and we'll be happy to implement them with the government together to make a new India. You know, and you were talking about new India. Recently, we were considered polio-free, great success for our country. So let's talk about these diseases that we've always been struggling with. The, the TB factor, polio has been done away with. So many other such, you know, diarrhea is a, is a major disease that uh, Indians are facing. So how are you looking at these? Uh, uh, see, by the way, in, on one, day, one hand, you can laud the effort that po we are polio-free. Mm. But for a whole country where there are hundreds of diseases, what are we celebrating? We must start working from the ground and finish in 5 to 10 years. If we can be proud of the health of our country, we would have done something. If we keep doing these slogans, we'll never get anywhere. That's what I'm against. In India, we have the attitude, koi cheez kar li, ja bhai, haan, kya kar diya, wah, 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 wah. This all doesn't amount to anything. Okay. People are still in the bad shape. You should see the kind of water they're drinking. What are we talking about? So I'm saying unless you have fire on your tail, unless you feel the burn in your heart mm -hmm. to say we are going to fix India and we are going to do it together, unless we do that, we will still be sitting here five years from now just theorizing and congratulating ourselves or oh, what a great That's a very plan. realistic point of view. Uh, again, India, in terms of medical tourism, do you think how India can really take on? I mean, We are well best equipped to do medical tourism and we are attracting a lot of people. We have good facilities, high-end, like I said, few, but not accessible to the general public, but accessible to foreign tourists. It's a good thing. It does two things. One, it does it increases the, the image and profile of India exactly. that we are doing something very well, like IT we were doing, like some of the other things we are doing, right? Second is the fact that it brings in foreign exchange instead of it going out, which it was going before we started this whole sector. And it also helps hospitals to cross-subsidize the, the free services. So it is, it is all positive. And we are, we are, the government is trying to help us. We have talked about it for many years. Maybe it will happen now that we have medical visa where people don't have to stand outside embassies for days. Sick people wait for three weeks to get your visa. The poor man is going to die before he gets here. So we need to streamline our systems. The airports are getting better, which is a nice thing. Mm -hmm. Transport from the airport to the hospitals is getting better. The highways are getting better. So things are better, no mm -hmm. question. What about prices of the drugs? I mean, again, something that has to be looked at. Well, you know, look, from there are two different streams you must look at. One is the need of the people. The need of the people is to get as affordable a price as possible. The need of the pharmaceutical industry, which is going to bring in new drugs and develop and research and all that, that also has to be looked at and said that it is an expensive process. So we must find the medium between them that there is profiteering to a level where it is justifiable. 10%, 12% returns is a decent return. There's no need for 100% return or 50% return. That's what the government is there for, to make sure that there is no profiteering to a level at the cost of the human being. Mm -hmm. That should not happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, how are you looking at this lifestyle disease on the one hand? We have of course talked about the challenges right from maternal health to all these uh, uh, diseases at the ground level. How would you look at this again a phenomena which rising Indians as we say are also struggling with? No, and it's not only rising Indians, it's, it's at, the, uh, at the village level also we are, it's, we are seeing it a lot. So you're saying India had single whammy which was the communicable diseases. Fortunately, they have gone down, but they haven't gone away. But to add to that, woe, we now have a huge burden of non-communicable or lifestyle diseases. So we now have a double burden. And this double burden requires very coordinated, well-integrated, sharply focused move forward with limited resources. We must get the best bang for our bucks and create a very efficient healthcare system up and down and stop blaming each other, stop blocking each other. We need to work together, all of us, 
and then let us see what will happen when Dr. the Jahan, very positively you have shared all your ideas and as we wrap up this program as much as we would have liked to talk to you much more um, as a doctor what's your quest you've done so many operations you've handled so much in terms of the patients looked at healthcare what's the road what's the quest for you dr trehan okay so i'm working on two things one is to create this cohesion between government private sector and all that to deliver the current system at a much better level if we can coordinate it better second i'm working very intensively on creating a fusion between ayurveda and modern medicine okay. because i think that there is a possibility of creating the new medicine which will come out of india which will be as effective or more effective than current modern medicine allopathy it will be less traumatic to the human body and it will be half the cost okay. if we can accomplish that it, maybe not in my lifetime but if i can in my lifetime i'll be the happiest man because you must understand what is the problem with india is a problem with 4 billion people around us sure if we can't afford something 4 billion people cannot afford it okay. so the solutions we come up is a 4 billion opportunity for india to pro- to be the supplier of those solutions to the rest of the world so solutions are what we want and thank you so much for talking to us on radha sabati it's a pleasure talking I, to I, you I doctor i love it i could talk Narish, for days i know i think I we should have taken it much longer but, uh, yeah. and maybe the second edition so would my, come up my can... noon should come out but i'm saying we are dying to do things i hope it happens thank you so much for talking to us once again and that was dr naresh tohan talked on a range of issues i think much more is left again uh, to talk about but right now we are wrapping up this edition of the quest right here thank you for watching namaskar and bye bye <laughs>